Hello, Boy Nation. We're so happy today to be here to talk about Professor Joseph Regalia's new book. It is called Level Up Your Legal Writing Techniques and Technology to Supercharge Your Skills. It is published by Aspen Publishing. And we're here to talk a little bit today with Professor Regalia to hear about his writing process, who the audience is, and more. Hopefully, I'm Professor Nancy Ruan. We both teach at Boyd Law School at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. So Professor Regalia, so glad to have you here today. I am so excited to chat with you about this. Great, tell us a little bit about your book. So maybe what inspired you to write this legal writing book? Yeah, so there's so many wonderful legal writing books out there for people to use. And so I, I really needed this book to do something different and to play an important role before I was going to add to what is just an amazing, you know, um, repository of legal writing options. And I think for me, the most important thing is empowerment. Mm. So that's, that's really what made me want to write this book. Um, I think legal writing often feels really challenging, really difficult really inaccessible, particularly to, to law students and folks earlier in their career. And I wanted to put something together that was sort of a map for how to become really confident and really excited about their legal writing. Because, you know, and, and as we know, as legal writing professors, oftentimes um, it can feel like, you know, becoming great at this skill is going to require years or you have to be talented at it. And so I really wanted to sort of demystify what great legal writing is. And I wanted students to feel like, and then lawyers to feel like they are in the driver's seat of their writing. And so I'd say, you know, years of the work that went into this book was all about trying to figure out how do we make it accessible? Mm -hmm. And so I think stepifying was a big piece. What do you so, mean by stepifying? So how do we take these things that look so impressive mm -hmm. um, and break it down into just these very simple, intuitive steps okay. that students, lawyers can feel like, I just I follow step one, I follow step two, I follow step three, and I have amazing writing. Mm -hmm. um, and then examples were another huge component. Because if you don't see how you know the, the, this technique or the skill comes together, mm -hmm. how, how do you do it, right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the years also that, that I spent you know, putting together this book we're about examples. Um, and it's not necessarily easy to find <laughs> great, great legal writing examples. Um, I think legal writing often gets, you know, a, a fair rap as um, not the most engaging, not the most fun mm -hmm. to read. And so a lot of the time was going and finding these amazing examples that would make students and lawyers feel like, okay, now I know what this looks like. Um, so that was that was another big a big uh, inspiration for the book. How do we get a lot of examples together? How do we really stepify all of these things that feel difficult and challenging and make them accessible? And and one thing other thing I'll mention, you know, I think throughout the entire book from the first page, I try to speak right to the learner and say, don't be afraid. Um, you can be confident. You can you know really take control over what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's you know I think just the tone of Framing it not as, you know, a set of rules they must follow and, you know, not making it as much of a scary formal process, but much more about getting back to empowerment. Right. So let's talk a little bit more about that learner. So I'm guessing legal writing learner. Are you thinking law student? Are you thinking junior associate at a law firm and anywhere in between? I mean, what's your target audience? I mean, one of the goals with this book was making something, a resource that could follow students into practice. And so absolutely, I was thinking early career lawyers. I've, I've done a lot of work with that group and trying to figure out, you know, how, how do we transition from the law school environment to now I'm a lawyer, now I have clients, now I've got to do all this stuff. So that was definitely one of the, one of the big goals. But um, I also wanted to make, and I hope that it's accessible enough, that law students also can gain, you know, a lot of benefits from it. And that there's enough in there because it is very comprehensive. I mean, it really covers, I think, start to finish everything you might want to do in your legal writing. I wanted to make it so it could it could live with them on their journey, mm -hmm. that it could be something they come back to and say, well, now I'm writing something, you know, more complicated or more advanced or what have you. Let me pull this open and see, you know, the examples, the steps, all of those, those great resources. So I, I really hope that it can go from law student all the way through um, – through practice, and then even into the senior levels. I mean, I think 
the goal was to put together a ton of resources, make them accessible so that lawyers don't feel like they need to go to 20 different resources and references and can kind of have one place um, to go, for, go to for inspiration. It seemed to me in looking at the table of contents and sort of flipping through just this morning, how rich it is with regard to technology. Why did you decide to put so much of an emphasis throughout the book, not just in one chapter that other books might do, but throughout the book to actually engage, have your learners engage with technology? Absolutely. So if I had to pick, you know, the two things I try to do to this book or with this book that I really believe add value and, and are going to be a resource. So one is that empowerment piece. Two is the technology. Mm -hmm. um, we are entering a new era uh, with AI, with generative AI. And even aside from that, all the amazing technology that has you know, supported lawyers doing what they do. Um, it, but particularly now, we're in this moment, I think, that is very unique and very special where there's a lot of fear around what technology is going to mean for legal practitioners, for the clients we, we serve. And to me, it really is time to start thinking about technology as a skill mm -hmm. and not something that we just deal with. You know, so often when I talk to lawyers or law students about technology, it's this sense of, you know, something I have to deal with. I have to go figure out this, this tech tool to get my real work done. And I think we're, we're entering this era where technology is, is more of the thing we're doing. I mean, it's just so wrapped up in the substance of our work, how we draw insights, how we explain things, how we communicate to clients. And so my goal was to make technology feel not like this separate thing that law students or lawyers have to deal with, but as a, an essential part of every step of the writing process. So I think one thing this, this book really does that's different is, as you said, from the first page to the end, it's not like, oh, go read the chapter on technology. Mm -hmm. It's, okay, you're starting the research process. What technology might help? You're starting to outline. Where, where should we think about technology? Maybe it's not helpful for you at that stage, but at least consider what are your tools, what are your options? And then through every single step um, until that, that writing project is finished, holistically, how can technology be more, and I think this is something we're seeing with the whole generative AI boom, how can it be in a collaborator? How can it be an assistant on your journey as opposed to just this thing we have to deal with or get through? Um, so that, that was a very big piece. And then on top of that, you know, beyond just weaving technology into the process, um, there is a whole chapter on generative AI. Mm. Because I think we're at the stage where it's coming and, and everyone sort of feels in our, in our field that it's coming. But weren't you worried that once you get the chapter done and, you know, next month it's going to be outdated? So, yes, that is definitely a concern. Mm -hmm particularly with generative AI, right? I mean, every day there's something new, new feature, new tool, and, and not just little things. I mean, new features, new possibilities that could change how we do what we do as, as legal professionals. Um, so two things I try to do there. One, I, I really focus on skills. So that is, I'm not going to suggest they're evergreen, that they'll never need to be adjusted or our, our, our approach towards these tools will need to be adjusted. But I really tried to approach it from a skill perspective. So as opposed to, you know, use this product or use this feature, it's more how are you interacting with the tool? How, how, what's your thought process for choosing a tool? What's your process for, you know, weaving it into your workflow as opposed to, you know, really focusing on today? 2024, you know, what, what can you do? What can't you do? That said, um, things are changing so quickly that I do imagine uh, there will be a second edition pretty quickly. And I think any book, frankly, that is going to touch on tech skills right now, we're just in this, this sort of renaissance with, with AI. Um, there, will, there will be updates. There will certainly be well, updates. Well, I already heard a rumor that it was number one, that your book was number one in terms of legal writing case books across law schools, is that correct? It, it is, and I think a lot of that is, um, it is the technology piece, right? Which is people, they want guidance, they want resources. I think there's a little fear of, around what is AI gonna mean for us? Mm -hmm. Legal professionals, law students, maybe even law professors, right? How, how is this gonna change things? And you know, our whole, our whole society is dealing with this right now. And so I think because particularly AI and generative AI, um, it lends itself to writing. And I think that's how often many of us first work with these tools and, and experience these tools. Um, 
that that's a place where people want, they want guidance, they want resources, they want help. And so, you know, I think that is a big piece of, of why it has been really successful and very humbling to see um, how many folks want, you know, these resources. And then I do think the other piece that can be really attractive is just how comprehensive the book is. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, sometimes when we're trying to learn a complicated skill, and I think this is really good, you'll have a book that focuses on one part of that skill set pretty narrowly. And one thing I, I did hope that this book would serve is more of a, a comprehensive resource. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, that is pretty attractive to a lot of legal writers out there. And then one other thing I'll throw out there, again, is the examples. Um, you know, I've, I've had the opportunity to chat with a lot of folks who have read the book now and, and who have been fans, thankfully. Um, and I think the examples are just something that stick out to... That's what sets it apart. I think so. Mm -hmm. so. There's more than 300 examples, but those came from more than 10,000 examples that I collected. Wow. So it was... It was a serious process. So you had yeah. a data set of 10, did you say 10,000? More than 10,000 oh, wow. examples. And then yeah. how did you narrow it down to the ones you chose for the book? A lot of weekends and evenings, and <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, because examples are so tricky. Um, you, you want them to illustrate the concept and the technique, but they also need to be really accessible. Um, I also gave it a lot, of, a lot of thought to who the example came from. I didn't want it to to be here's a bunch of examples from the same type of lawyer, the same type of person. And so, you know, diversity was also a big, a big um, goal of mine, because I also think it's important that folks who are reading the book, when they're reading those examples, they can imagine themselves as those lawyers. I mean, that gets back to the, to the empowerment and the accessibility. I wanted law student, lawyer, maybe who's not really confident about the book, um, to be able to, to see these examples and envision them as, as those people writing these amazing pieces of, of legal writing. So I guess my last question for you is, if you are suggesting a stepified approach, if I could use your word, yeah. and to look at these examples, is there a place for legal writers, and especially novice legal writers, to have their own voice? I, I love that you asked that question, because to me that is, that gets back to the empowerment point, point again. Um, and maybe another way of putting it is, you know, my hope is that this book will help people get excited about their legal writing. Um, I do a lot of work, not only with our amazing law students, but also with practitioners. And to me, it is heartbreaking when you see folks who've been through law school in particular, they're, they're starting their career, maybe they're a couple years into their career, and they just dread their writing. They're not excited about it. This is not something they look forward to doing. And yet, as you know, this is what we do, right? I mean, legal folks, they write. And so... To me, a big piece of this is getting people bought in, getting people excited. And I think a lot of that is finding their own voice. Absolutely. Um, many lawyers, I think, feel like their voice and their creativity has been stamped down by legal writing. They have to follow these strict, you know, these strict formal requirements and templates and all of that kind of good stuff. But what we know is that legal writing is about communicating and it's about communicating ideas. And the truth is, you know, our own expression and our own perspectives play a very big role. Um, and when you look at the best legal writers, they're, they're not all one-size-fits-all writers. They are usually very unique, very creative. Do they all do some of the same things? Of course. Um, those foundational skills and principles are important, but they have a voice. And, and yes, I, I hope that what comes across from this book, again, from page one, is you know, this is a set of ideas. It's a set of tools that you have to make your own. And if you're not able to, you know, look at a piece of your writing and be like, oh, I wrote that, then you're doing something wrong. Excellent. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank you. This has been great.